one of my greatest frustrations with researchers or with applied researchers or statisticians in general is that many people use the 0.05 alpha level as sort of this cliff. And for practical reasons, I understand why we've selected a sort of decision point as far as making decisions a priori before we actually implement an investigation or an analysis of anything. But to me, all of that should be individualized. What I mean by that is that any sort of analysis as to the significance of a particular variable or a particular characteristic on an outcome should be contingent upon the overall totality of that particular variable. And what I mean by that is that oftentimes we assume that some particular characteristic or variable is so pertinent to a particular investigation that we must have very stringent tests of, or very stringent alpha levels. And of course, the more strict you are on the alpha level and setting the parameters on that front, the greater the likelihood that you're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. That, of course, has the result of non-significance. But bear with me for a second. Imagine we're caught in a situation where the potential price or cost to the implementation of some sort of program or change or policy development is significant. It's so significant, it's going to cost more than a million dollars to implement this new program or policy or intervention. And then I suspect that having a more strict alpha level makes sense because of the amount of investment that's going to be required to ensure that that particular uh, intervention works. However, if your intervention is not going to cost you time, or that much time, or it's not going to cost you that much in terms of money or any available resources, then having a very strict alpha level is probably not your best bet. I believe that yes, and I understand that each particular discipline in each particular field should create their own conventions as to the alpha levels that they set. It makes sense. In the medical field, it should be very strict. Why? Because the stakes are high. You're dealing with human lives. You're dealing with whether treatments are going to have the intended effect that you want it to have, but perhaps it also has unintended side effects, or intended side effects for that matter. But the idea is that because you're dealing with human lives in a very profound and significant way in the medical field, the significant levels attached to those experiments and those studies should be quite, or the alpha levels that one attaches to those studies should be quite, quite strict. However, in other fields, it may be less strict. And we in the education field, particularly in most social sciences field, have sort of laid out an assessment that the 0.05 level is sort of the magic number. Well, what does this really mean? Well, what it means is that if you were to conduct this study a hundred times, a hundred times you would receive the same result of statistical significance, but in fact, five of those times, the result or the effect is not a real effect. So to put it into perspective, what that really means is that five out of 100 times, you're going to get a significant effect when you shouldn't have. You're going to reject an all hypothesis when you shouldn't have, right? Which basically means you're going to achieve statistical significance when in the real world, there is no statistically significant effect or relationship there. Let us assume that we were conducting an investigation that would have some sort of, we were trying to study some sort of effect on student outcomes, such as learning or grades or 
or scores in some sort of exam or whatnot. And we implemented an intervention. And the intervention was simple. It's a five-minute massage in the morning. It doesn't cost much in terms of time. It's just five minutes. And it doesn't cost much in terms of money because the students could actually do that to one another. You know, give massages to one another, right? Even if the effect were to be such that the alpha level would be a 0.06, that would be an interesting finding to me. Because I could implement that in any school and I could actually receive the potential effects, the positive potential effects from that type of implementation on student scores or, or grades or student learning based on a very uh, 0.06 alpha level, right? Some people would say, no, you shouldn't go up to 0.06. No, you shouldn't go up to 0.11 or 0.10 is too much. Too much. P-values are 0.10. One zero. Some fields in social sciences or even education allow 0 0.10 to be an alpha level where we accept it, particularly if it's the very, very first time that it's ever been investigated and if it's a very low sample size. We're probably more willing to accept such convention. But I'd say it shouldn't be about sample size necessarily, and it shouldn't be about whether um, it's the first time that it has been investigated. Those are good norms. Those are good norm normative practices to have, but I think it should be localized or it should be individualized to each variable under question. If the variable that you're implementing or if the particular um, relationship that you're looking at is one where if we were trying to motivate a change, and it would cost us a significant amount of money, then perhaps we should use not a 0.05, but perhaps a 0.01 or a 0.001 alpha level in that case, right? 0 0.05, 0 0.00, instead of a 0 0.05 is what I meant to say. When you do that, you're telling the, the reader and you're giving the reader the, the, the insight that you understand that some interventions or some uh, characteristics are more meaningful in terms of how we view them. And in other cases, you know, a 0.15, that means that 15 out of 100 times I'm going to be wrong. That means that 85% of the time I'll be right. I am willing to accept those odds if it only costs me five minutes in the morning to implement such an intervention. And it doesn't cost me any money. This is the sort of, this is my concern with many applications by most social scientists and by most statisticians or by data analysts that have been doing this type of work is that their focus has been exclusively on the conventions of the, of the statistical significance levels that are typical in their own disciplines or fields. And that's a very, very warranted uh, explanation. It makes sense because, again, if you're, if you're going to be publishing research, you're publishing to an audience base largely of social scientists or applied data analysts or applied researchers in that particular field or discipline. And so you need to speak to that audience, correct? But I think that the application of the alpha level in, in, to be uh, special, specific to each separate variable or each individual variable to be different based on what you think is important or what you think it would cost in terms of money, time, and resources to have in, uh, some sort of program or policy or intervention um, or to implement such a program policy intervention and whatnot. I think it should be specific to the particular uh, variables. And it shouldn't be, oh, well, we're just going to choose 0.05 because that's what I want it to be, 0.05, because that's a conventional practice in the field. Um, and to some extent, that's why I use, in many of my publications, uh, I typically have tried to use what is varied levels of, of p-value uh, specifications or production of results with various varied uh, numerical p-values, right? 
p.05, p less than 0.05, p less than 0.01, p less than 0.005, typical sort of structure that I use, or 0.001. It's usually three levels. On occasion, I'll use a p value less than 0.10. But again, I allow the researcher or the reader to make his or her own inferences, hoping that he or she is astute enough as a reader to understand what are the sort of implications of the varied notions of significance or alpha level detection. Um, and so for me this is one of the things that has been sort of a contentious issue, uh, something that sort of sparked a little fire under me uh, for a while uh, in terms of the statistical significance level. And it's frustrating uh, to some extent, but uh, but I understand the conventions of practice and the discipline in the field totally lay away, uh, totally have um, prominence over the decisions that an applied data analysts will typically use. For this session, you learned a little bit about the alpha level and the statistical significance of p-values and the sort of idea that I that I don't like, which is using the p-value as a cliff, as if there's some sort of cutoff, that 0.05 means it's over, and that a 0.06 is meaningless in comparison to a p-value that's 0.05. Again, it really isn't when it's all said and done. It's all about probabilities and the likelihood of something being true when in fact in reality it 